The man on the tank wants to take over the prison with the survivors after the end of the world. Hello all. This is Jacobson and this is a brief retelling of the 8th episode of the 4th season of the zombie series The Walking Dead. You can see the previous episodes at the links in the video description. Thank you so much for participating and for the 1300 subscribers. Hopefully we'll keep it up and by the next video we'll have 1400 subscribers. Once this video gets 150 likes, I will release the next installment. Enjoy watching it. Philip motivating his people to take over a nearby camp, the prison, for themselves. He is able to knock out Michonne from behind a tree and then holds Herschel at gunpoint with his 9mm Beretta 9.2SB nickel pistol, forcing the latter to drop his 9mm Glock 19 pistol. In the camp meeting, Philip explains that he captured two people from the prison. He says they can be used as leverage, lessening the possibility of anyone being killed. He fabricates a story to justify his plan, claiming that the people from the prison are the ones who mutilated him, burned down his former camp, and killed his daughter. Almost everyone in the camp agrees to take the prison for their own needs, but Tara and Lily are more reluctant. Lily walks out from behind a tree, having heard all of Philip's speech. She questions his motives. He repeats that most of the people at the prison are killers. She then asks him if she is with a killer, implying him. He tells her that his only concern is for her and Megan's safety. Philip once again confesses his deep love for Lily. But regardless, Lily's opinion of Brian seems to have changed. Philip then goes into an RV, where he is holding both Michonne and Herschel. He explains that kidnapping them wasn't personal, as he intends to use them as bargaining chips in his bid to take the prison. Herschel tries to convince Philip that both groups can live together in peace. Philip, however, is obstinate and quite determined to carry out his plan. He makes it a point to tell them that he has no intent harm anyone, but Herschel voices doubt. He asks Philip how he can threaten someone else's daughters, when he once had one himself. Philip pauses, then coldly says, because they aren't mine. Lily and Megan, along with several other joyous children, and elderly people stay at a camp alongside a river to wait out the battle. She makes one last attempt to stop Philip from choosing to harm others at the prison, which proves futile. Philip converses with and hugs Megan goodbye, before she runs off to play in the mud. Back at the prison, Glenn and the other ill are recuperating. Glenn and Maggie share a moment and Glenn teases her about their upcoming anniversary. Now, knowing what happened to Carol, Daryl becomes furious, and he tells Rick that he could have at least waited until he and his group returned before a decision was made. Rick explains that she has a car and supplies, but Daryl is still upset, wondering what will happen to Lizzie and Mika. Rick adds that he couldn't bring Carol back to the prison because of Tyrese, who Rick believes would kill Carol given the opportunity. When Rick states that he hasn't told Tyrese yet, Daryl wants to find out how he will react and the two leave to find him. Elsewhere, Bob contemplates a box on the floor, probably containing liquor, but hides it when Sasha arrives abruptly. She thanks Bob for helping save her life. He defers that it was Herschel's work that saved her life. Tyrese then calls Rick and Daryl into the tombs, showing them the remains of a dissected rabbit's body, which reminds them of the rats that were found by the fences. Tyrese believes that the person who killed Karen and David is the same person that left the dissected rabbit there. Rick disagrees, but before Rick can tell him about Carol, the prison is rocked by an explosion. Running outside, they find Philip standing on the top of a military tank, surrounded by his armada of cars and armed survivors outside the prison fences. Philip demands that Rick come down to negotiate. Rick tries to refuse, stating that there is a council that makes the decisions now, but Philip then reveals that he has Michonne and Herschel held hostage forcing Rick to come down and talk. The prison group prepares for the possibility of fleeing, as they seemingly no longer have the numbers to hold off the militia. They plan that, if their defenses fail, they will all get on the nearby bus and escape. Philip is quick to give Rick an ultimatum. Leave the prison by sundown or he will kill Michonne and Herschel. Rick counters that they have several ill people and children, but his pleas fall on deaf ears. Meanwhile, Daryl secretly begins handing out weapons and prepare for a war. By the river, Megan is still playing in the mud. Lily sees a walker trying to cross the river, 
but it gets swept away by the strong current. Megan then digs out a flash flood warning sign. However, she loosens the dirt just enough so that a buried walker is able to break through it. Lily runs to Megan's aid and shoots the walker with her 9mm Heckler Coke P9S pistol, but not before it is able to bite Megan on her shoulder. Philip handily shoots several oncoming walkers in the head, warning Rick that the sound will draw more of them in and that they'll be forced to leave soon. Carl notifies to Daryl that he has a good shot on the governor, but Daryl tells him not to take it because it could start a war for the third time, which they are obviously trying to avoid. Mika and Molly bring Judith out to put her on the bus, but Lizzie wants them to remember the fighting mindset that Carol had taught them and she believes that they should help. Rick tells Philip that the prison could definitely be shared, as per Herschel's advice. Not after Woodbury, not after Andrea, Philip responds, which seems to fill Michonne with fury. Rick maintains that his group isn't leaving. And, just like Philip said, the battle between them would attract more walkers, and when they come, they'll tear down the fences and no one will be able to live at the prison. Infuriated, Philip jumps down from the tank and holds Michonne's katana to Herschel's neck, muttering that he will fix the damn fences. Rick pleads to Tara and the rest if a fight is truly what they want. I've fought him before and after. We took in his old friends. They've become leaders in what we have here. Now, you put down your weapons, walk through those gates, and you're one of us. We let go of all of it, and nobody dies. Everyone who's alive right now. Everyone who's made it this far. We've all done the worst kinds of things just to stay alive, but we can still come back. We're not too far gone. Rick says. Herschel smiles, knowing that Rick has found what he lost. We get to come back. I know we all can change. Rick continues. Philip thinks for a moment and starts to move the katana away from Herschel. However, Philip mutters, liar, before slashing the katana down, partially decapitating Herschel. Beyond enraged, Rick and the prison inhabitants open fire. While Carl manages to graze the governor in the arm, a bullet from the returning volley hits Rick in the thigh and he drags himself behind the overturned bus for cover. Taking advantage of the distraction, Michonne rolls away. She tackles one of the governor's militia to the ground and strangles him with her boot before proceeding to attempt to untie herself. A still-alive Herschel attempts to drag himself away, but Philip uses the katana to chop at Herschel's neck until completely decapitated, to Beth and Maggie's horror from afar. Nearby, Tara is paralyzed by this brutal act as well. Just then, Lily walks up with Megan's corpse, witnessing Philip's act of murder. Upon seeing Megan's body, Philip becomes completely stoic. He takes Megan in his arms and shoots her in the head with his Beretta to prevent her from reanimating. Now with nothing to fight for, he gives another order to his militia. Go through the fences in your cars, get your guns, we go in. Kill them all. Mitch, in control of the tank, drives it straight through the fence and ultimately collapses it, destroying the crops in the process. The governor and some of his militia use the tank for cover, while the rest attack, invade the prison in cars and pickups. The third war officially begins. With the tank blasting holes on the prison's building's walls, the inhabitants begin evacuating to the best of their ability. Maggie and Beth oversee the movement of the elderly and the infirm to escape into the bus, before Maggie runs back into the prison to grab Glenn. Rick jumps out from behind the overturned bus and attacks Philip, which begins a brutal fistfight. Maggie and Glenn both arrive at the bus, but Beth is missing, having also left to find Judith. She leaves a protesting Glenn on the bus, telling him to leave if she isn't back in time. The tank tears down the fence leading into the courtyard, pinning Daryl in a corner. Walkers wandered in as well, and one of them attacks Daryl, who is focused on the militia. Rick and the governor are still fighting. The noise from the battle is drawing in even more walkers from outside the prison boundaries. Herds began to pour in through the destroyed fences, interrupting the battle between the two groups. Daryl uses the walker that nearly bit him as an effective shield. He grabs it and proceeds toward the hostels. After he throws out a grenade, Tara runs off from behind the tank. Maggie runs into Sasha and Bob, who are pinned down as well. Bob is shot through the arm, but since there is an exit wound, it can most certainly be treated. They see the bus leave without them, so the three of them flee as well. 
Tyrese is pinned down by Alicia and another soldier. But Lizzie and Mika arrive and shoot the both of them with Alicia taking a shot to the head. Tyrese tells the children that they have to get out. As walkers begin to fill the whole courtyard, the children run in the direction of the prison while Tyrese chases after them, yelling for them to go in the opposite direction. Rick is overwhelmed by Philip, who pins him down and brutally beats him before beginning to choke him to death. Suddenly, Michonne's katana blade bursts through Philip's chest, impaling him. She casts him aside and helps Rick up. Immediately, he asks about Carl's whereabouts, but she couldn't know. Rick wholeheartedly goes off to find him. Michonne takes one last glance at the dying Philip, and decides to leave him to die in agony. Daryl takes out a few walkers and manages to destroy the tank by dropping a grenade down the cannon barrel. Hearing the grenade rolling, Mitch bails out, but is quickly put down by Daryl, who sends a crossbow bolt through his chest. He runs into Beth, who was unable to find Judith. She wants to keep looking, but Daryl tells her that it's time to go. They then run away from the prison. A bloodied and bruised Rick stumbles back into the courtyard, where a few walkers appear. They begin to walk towards him, but Carl shoots them in the head. They search for Judith, only to find her bloody baby carrier, which brings them to the conclusion that Judith is dead. Infuriated, Carl takes out his rifle and shoots a walker repeatedly down to his last shell, before tearfully breaking down. The pair then limp off, away from the prison, which has been overrun by hordes of walkers, amongst them, a zombified Clara. Meanwhile, a dying Philip is still lying on the grass painfully, where Lily approaches him and shoots him in the forehead with his own pistol, ending the governor once and for all. Carl and Rick walk away from the prison, with Rick proclaiming, don't look back, Carl. Just keep walking, as herds of walkers stream in through the destroyed ruins. The prison became overrun, damaged beyond repair. End of Series 8. As soon as this video gets 150 likes and 25 comments, I'm releasing a sequel.